Uh, the Lakers have plans to play Bronny and LeBron together on opening night. They're going to make this history. Let's play the clip. Obviously, we're seeing something unprecedented. We're seeing LeBron and his son, Bronny, playing together. And this is obviously the culmination of a lifelong dream for LeBron. What is the plan for them to onboard? I guess what I'm asking is, how soon should we expect to see them on the floor together? We're going to be seeing history very, very soon. The, the expectation on the Lakers is that their, their debut together, the first father-son duo in NBA history to play at the same time in a game, will be as soon as opening night, October 22nd, against the Minnesota Timberwolves at home at Crypto. Arena from everything I'm told. That is the plan. That is the hope. But again, it's up to J.J. Redick, LeBron James, and, and you know, I guess their comfortability. J.J. Redick has said publicly that he's going to involve both Bronny James, LeBron James in that process. And so I think that is a process we'll see play out. But this is a player, Bronny James, four-year contract, second-round draft pick. This is going to be a developmental year for him in a lot of ways. He's going to spend a lot of time on the active roster, a lot of time also in the G League when that starts in November. So we're going to see a player who went through a lot of medical stuff last, uh, last year with the cardiac arrest. He's still finding his footing, and that's how we're going to see him this year in a developmental And I'm position. still getting used to hearing J.J. Redick as the coach of the Lakers. What is the early sense of how that's going for him, our, our former teammate here at ESPN? The early sense is how detail-oriented J.J. Redick is. The uh, making history, this is how this whole thing's being framed. It has nothing to do with, hey, they're going to put their best lineup out there. They really want to start the season out strong. It's making, is this history? Le LeBron James stuffing his son into a role that he hasn't earned. Is that, you know, calling it history? Why aren't they calling it what it is? One of the most selfish, most narcissistic uh, assaults on meritocracy that we've ever seen in sports. But instead, we're framing it as, hey, we're going to see this history. Make sure you tune in as we make history on opening night. I, I just reject all of that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. The very same people, I I'm going to go political just for a minute. The very same people that say that Donald Trump was propped up by his father will be the same ones paying tribute to this. <laughs> just think about it. But here's the thing. And by the way, good job on Shams. He's pretty good on camera there. So he's the NBA insider. I'm just a Laker fan in recess, right? So Shams actually said that Bronny is a developmental project who will be in the G League soon, right? That's where he's going to really learn how to play this game of professional basketball. Jason, when was the last time you heard of any player that is earmarked for the G League being promised opening night minutes. It makes no sense. So this XYZ player, oh, yeah, he's going to be in the G League. He's going to get some minutes. He's going to develop. Oh, yeah, but he's going to play opening night. What, what, excuse me? And, and this goes to show you that J.J. Redick is not the coach. Calling him the Lakers head coach is an absolute insult to men like, forget Pat Riley or Phil Jackson. Randy Fund would never. Dell Harris would never. <laughs> Kurt Rambis would never. What an absolute sham this is. So again, let me just go back to my point. Yeah, that guy's a G League player. That's where he's going to spend most of it. Opening night, though, oh, he's going to get some, really. What, what an absolute joke of an organization they have allowed to fester. It's just a doggone shame. This is where we've come, Jason. This is what it is now. Uh, Steve, I, I'm a tiny bit distracted. You made some great points. But, man, we got Hurricane Butter going on right now inside Butter's stomach. Butter, do you need something to eat or do you I, need to take a poop? No, no, it's all, it's all, <laughs> it's just water. It's just, it's just. Tiffany, can we get <laughs> Tiffany in here? Uh, <laughs> Tiffany, I think Butter needs something to eat. He, get him it's a protein gotta be, bar, Tiff. It's, it, Hey, did I end up Protein in the butter bar. box by not saying anything? Is that what, that's what's happening? <laughs> oh, no, we can hear you loud and clear. Butter's stomach is rumbling so loud that I'm like, a microphone's got to be catching this. This is incredible. I thought, we got to get this man something to eat. But, uh, Steve, I'm going to keep it moving. Uh, Jim Trotter, uh, formerly of the NFL Network, is he now with The Athletic, I think? Uh, he used to be with Sports Illustrated. Longtime San Diego Union Tribune. Uh, beat writer for the San Diego Chargers. That's when I knew him. Uh, he's, he got laid off by the NFL Network a couple years ago. 
and immediately launched a lawsuit and positioned himself as, I got fired because I asked Roger Goodell questions about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, well, now he's dropped his uh, lawsuit and he put out a statement yesterday. The NFL and I have agreed to resolve my lawsuit and will be creating a scholarship foundation for journalism students at HBCUs and the NFL has agreed to make a donation in support thereof. I am proud to have the opportunity to help and support HBCU students achieve their goals and dreams just as scholarships afforded me those opportunities when I was a student at Howard University. Uh, I, I'm going to, I want to be crystal clear here. When I knew Jim Trotter, telling he's one of the best guys in the business, when he was working at the San Diego U Union Tribune, I knew Jim Trotter, looked forward to my trips to San Diego to engage with him at games. Uh, I, I knew Jim Trotter as a great man and a great journalist. I, I, I think he's an unfortunate victim of this age of, of uh, victimhood and victim mentality that has overtaken all black people and particularly in the media. Uh, and so I, I just want to, I'm to, the Jim Trotter I knew, I, I really liked and respected. I, I was not a fan of this lawsuit and, and, you know, I don't know. I really, I'm gonna have to give more thought to what I think about this conclusion. But Steve, maybe you got a thought, and you can help me along the way. What do you think about this resolution here? Yeah, now isn't he one of the ones that was asking those race peddling questions to Caitlin Clark, which I thought was completely unfair and out of line. Here's my view of it. <sighs> yeah, you take a settlement. They all take a settlement. I think Colin Kaepernick took a settlement, right? Um, is that really being revolutionary? I don't know what this really changes. I, I think that if you're gonna have the NFL give scholarships to HBCU journalism students. It's not bad, but I, I would say you want to get to the heart of the problem, to the belly of the beast. We have whole school educational districts and systems where nobody is reading at grade level. You really want to fix this problem and create the next generation of Jim Trotter and Jason Whitlock and Ralph Wiley. You better get to the kids even earlier. You better get to the kids in first, second, and third grade, where they enjoy reading, they understand reading, and they can understand how to write. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a moment of Fearless.